The average American spends around five hours on their phones every day, which means more than 70 days out of the year we are staring at our phones. And as much as I wanted to believe I was better than the average, I came across the harsh reality that I indeed was not. And it's only getting worse. Most teenagers are spending over eight hours per day on their phone. Now, I remember learning about addiction in medical school. It's characterized by using something more than you intend, trying to cut down but being unable to, or experiencing cravings or urges to use that thing, which oftentimes leads to consequences. Raise your hand if you can't even remember the last time that you went to the bathroom without your phone. It probably will make you feel a bit different about holding or using someone else's. So, I wanted to figure out if there was a straightforward way that anyone, regardless of what you do for work or the stage of life that you're in, could regain control over their phones, break this addiction, and experience all the benefits of focused, improved social life, and everything else that comes with a healthy relationship with the devices in our pockets. If you're new here, my name is J.R. Smith, and I'm an orthopedic surgery resident at the Mayo Clinic. I'm also a father, a husband, and clearly a content creator. And I just so happen to have this incredible opportunity to attend one of my line brothers wedding in South Carolina. And you're definitely not going to want to miss how extravagant this wedding is. But for some foreshadowing, one of the most famous celebrities on the planet also got married at this location. But the goal is to first see if I can use a few tricks and strategies to control my phone usage during this beautiful wedding. And we're going to get into the specifics of those tricks in a minute. Now, I must admit, having a camera to record videos and take photos during this event definitely will help with my screen time. But that being said, not having the unlimited opportunity to post these pictures and videos directly to Instagram will surely be challenging. I know I'll have a super strong urge to immediately share everything that I'm experiencing. But taking photos and videos without posting them right away and refreshing to see how many likes and comments I have will actually allow me to capture and remember these moments in life while actually staying present in them. And as someone who walks around most of the time with a camera in their pockets, this has definitely been something I've struggled with. So this experience is exactly what I need. So I had the incredible honor of being a groomsman at this wedding of two people that I truly love, a day in Houston, Okinyade, and they went all out. This is the night before where they held an all-white welcome party that we took a boat to. And Kari not only was chosen to be the ring bearer for the big day, but he also took on the responsibility of being the life of the party. So in my own personal quest to try to regain control, over my phone and not have as much of a desire to constantly be checking my phone. I was scrolling through various YouTube videos and learning about these dopamine detoxes and ultimately for someone who requires their phone to communicate for work or to check in on patients, I cannot just put my phone away, hide it in a box for 30 days. So I wanted to try to do my own personal challenge that would be at least more realistic for me in my situation, um, needing knowing that I need a phone at least at some point during the day, but also wanting to regain control over my phone. And so I ultimately came up with five rules or five kind of principles to using my phone that I'm going to be using for the next seven days. The first principle is not using my phone for the first hour of awake time. So this is something that I have not enjoyed of myself that I roll over, I click my alarm on my phone, and then I just grab it and I'm like, okay, the only way I'm gonna stay awake is if I do something, check email, do something on my phone, so I'm looking at a screen, and that's not healthy. Second thing I'm going to do is app time limits and really, really stick to them. So I have a 30 minute time limit on all social media. So it adds, so I can do 10 minutes on Instagram, 10 minutes on TikTok, which I don't really use, or 10 minutes on YouTube or whatever. And the only person who has access to the code to unlock that is my wife, Madison, and she's not, she's not gonna give me the password. The third rule that I have is I'm going to keep my phone in grayscale color, color, color mode. So basically you're able to turn your, at least iPhones, into essentially just black and white. Um, so this is going to lower the dopamine boost that I receive from looking at the bright colors and all of the things that these apps and widgets and 
um, tools on the phone are designed to basically draw a sense of pleasure from us using colors and things like that. So if I can tone that down, then maybe I'm not going to be as interested in just going on my phone for no reason. The fourth rule that I'm employing is absolutely no phone notifications other than messages. And the only reason I'm keeping messages on is again, because I actually need this for work and I need this to communicate and know what's going on when I'm not at work, like right now at a wedding to make sure that I don't miss the wedding or don't miss the things I'm supposed to be doing for the wedding. But messages is the only notification that I'm going to have on my phone. So things are gonna be less distracting. I'm gonna get less buzzes on my phone. And if people send an email or people give me a phone call, I'm going to have a dedicated time twice a day to look through my emails and check any missed calls. And the last rule that I have is no phones an hour before going to bed. So similar to the hour upon awakening, no phones before going to bed for at least an hour. And most importantly, doing all of this while also just doing a tons of different things, whether it be at a wedding, on vacation, or whether it be at work. And hopefully these principles will work in both settings, but we'll see. Now, as I'm watching Kari practice for his big moment, it reminded me of another famous couple who made the same walk. This is the exact same location that Justin and Halle Bieber got married just a few years ago at the Montage Palmetto Bluff but I still don't know if I've seen anyone this cute walking down this aisle, but I don't know. Maybe I'm just a bit biased. is clearly getting just a little bit nervous before game time, but I can proudly say that he successfully completed the mission. So proud of this little kid. And the beautiful Okinyades became one. And it was only fitting that they ended up driving away in a convertible Rolls Royce. Now, a good party like this definitely makes it tough to not be on your phone. But the key is that you can't be on your phone if you're strolling with your line brothers. you can get distracted by less important things like your phone. Thank you so much to these two for allowing me to learn these lessons during such a beautiful wedding. Now let's head back home and see if we can use what we've learned in the real world. But first, unfortunately, I have something that I need to admit. <sighs> Guys, I don't want to be the bearer of bad news, but I already broke a rule. <laughs> I'm being completely transparent. This is just, this This is what vlogs are supposed to be. You know, not the sugar-coated, we're gonna pretend like we're doing more than we are or doing less than we are, I guess, in this video since it's supposed to be like less screen time. But I got home really late after the reception um, and I was in a room that I'm basically sharing with my son, Kari, um, that my wife and I are sharing with Kari. And, you know, so, uh, my wife and Kari are already asleep by the time I get in it's like midnight and you know I crawl in bed and try to be super quiet because Kari's crib is like right next to our bed essentially and I don't want to wake him up and um, you know then when I wake up in the morning um, you know at around I don't know seven or eight in the morning um, Kari my son is still asleep and usually this boy is up by about six six thirty seven at the latest but he had a very, very late night too because he was out with us as well, having a good time. So I'm in a single room and I can't really move without letting, getting him up. So I'm basically laying in bed and I'm just laying in bed, unable to really move and do anything. And instead of what I should have probably done is try to sneak out the room and 
go for a walk or do something like that. I just said, well, I can't move. I'm stuck in bed. I guess I'm just going to check emails and check notifications and see how other videos were doing on YouTube. So I started telling myself excuses instead of finding solutions. And that is the learning point of this failure is when you fail, it is usually not because of the excuses that you're going to tell yourself. It's usually because you failed to find a solution. So you can see I spent three hours and 44 minutes on my phone. Um, it's not great, but it is better than the over five hours I was spending um, traditionally on my phone. And for the most part, I think over an hour and a half of this is spent on text messages. So we're on the right track. We are on the right track. No more broken rules though. No more broken rules. So one thing that I've learned about not using my phone in the morning is that the pace for waking up and getting the day started just feels good, just feels healthy. It doesn't feel rushed or hectic and it's probably because I'm not wasting time, but there's just a different sense of peace to the day when I'm not starting it off with this thing. But that doesn't mean it's easy. Sorry for the raspy voice. I don't know if I'm getting sick or what it is, but my voice is like gone. But I wanted to talk about a brief difficulty with this challenge and it's because right now I am in between my day shifts and at work which is what I had yesterday 6 a.m. to 6 p.m. to my night shifts which is what I have today 6 p.m. to 6 a.m. that means that this morning I don't like have anything specific that I 100% need to do like work um, and before it was a little easier to maintain this hour of wake time without being on my phone because I would wake up get ready go to work and by the time I was like settled at work an hour had definitely passed um, but now that I'm just home now it's like okay force yourself to be productive uh, force yourself to do there are always things you can do that are not on your phone and the itch to get on my phone is real and it's also kind of scary that that is that's like an addiction right like where you kind of wake up and you're just like I need to I need this thing that's not okay but I think that that is a real thing. So if you are somebody who wakes up and doesn't have something specifically on your schedule, the challenge of breaking that habit of going straight to your phone is hard. Find something to do. The most productive thing that I could have done was probably study, but clearly didn't want to do that. So I went looking around my garage for things that I wanted in my home office, but I became increasingly productive during this free time as I moved on to crushing a workout. Oops, no, that, I misspoke. I meant getting crushed by a workout. But after all of this, I finally felt motivated to get some studying in. Guys, I'm struggling a little bit today. Um, I think it's primarily because today there's kind of like lulls. It's 1.31 in the morning and I'm on my night shift at the hospital. And the shift kind of started a bit busy. You know, we had one patient who has COPD, potentially has a COPD exacerbation. And we ended up, you know, actually having to send her from the floor up to the ICU. and. Um, you know, another patient with like 10 out of 10 chest pain after having a sternum fracture. And of course, the scary organ behind the sternum is the heart. So, um, you know, having to work that up, getting troponins, all these kind of cardiac labs and making sure that there's um, no cardiac injury that needs to be intervened on. And, you know, so things busy, right? And having to take care of patients in a way that it, it keeps the night moving quickly. But now there's kind of a lull and I also experienced this earlier in the day um, and during those times is when I really feel like I need to pull my phone out <laughs> and do something on my phone um, and it's hard and it's hard to just kind of you know am I gonna try to find something to make myself busy or am I just gonna pass time on my phone so I'm starting to realize that there is a relationship between um, lack of busyness and desire to be on phone <laughs> so um during times like this where i'm on the night shift and it's 1 30 in the morning and all my patients are tucked in there's no activations and no new traumas coming into the hospital 
um, it's tough. It's tough. I just want to just want to be on my phone. So I'm going to show you guys. I um, unfortunately, now that it is 1 a.m., I have my data from yesterday, my screen time from yesterday, and I was hoping that I was not going to go over four hours for a day, but I went over four hours yesterday. So let me show you. So here's my screen time from yesterday, which is basically today because it's 1 a.m., but four hours and two minutes. And I actually was on Instagram a lot more, 29 minutes. I have a 30 minute time limit. So you can see basically it just went off. My, my time limit for Instagram, I used it all up. And I was even playing Clash Royale, which is just a phone game that is literally just designed to pass time for me. So this was not the best day, but I am learning from it. As this week comes to an end, one of the biggest lessons that I've learned is that living in the current day and age that we live in, where content is constantly surrounding us, we can either fill our time with creation or consumption. And that doesn't mean creating content, that just means being productive in whatever industry that you're in and spending time working on that. Whether you're a doctor, a teacher, a lawyer, a student, your form of creation is simply production in whatever you're doing. And I think now people are very much accustomed to minimizing their creation and trying to optimize for as much time spent consuming content, whether that's social media, Netflix, whatever it is. The people who are able to understand this dichotomy in creation versus consuming um, and who are able to put principles in place to allow them to spend as much time creating as possible while limiting the time spent consuming, those are the people who are going to differentiate themselves. So again, for students, for example, these are going to be the students who are able to uh, spend more time studying, spend more time pursuing those extracurricular activities that are going to pay dividends for your applications for graduate schools. These are gonna be the doctors who find time to do additional things like spend time with your family. And whether it was waking up and not having anything specific on my calendar or being at the hospital and it being relatively quiet, I learned how easy it is for that free time to be eaten up, consuming. It is the end of the week, which means that it is now the time where we compare how our screen time looked this week compared to last week. And I'm also a little nervous, honestly, because I have not looked at what the entire week looks like in terms of an average. So I'm a little nervous, but I'm hopeful that it's going to at least be less than what it was last week. And just for your reference, I turned the color mode back on to my phone so that it just looks better for you guys, but still been in grayscale mode. But let's see how this week looks compared to last week. We're gonna start with looking at what the average was for my screen time last week. All right, so you can see average screen time was over five hours, five hours, majority of it being spent in messages and a lot of time being spent on Instagram, YouTube. So over five hours of screen time last week and this week we are down to three hours and 12 minutes. Again, honestly, the apps were the same, messages being the vast majority of time spent on my phone. And again, that was the one app that I actually still had notifications on. I'm pretty proud with how this week went, going from over five hours per day of screen time to just around three hours per day of screen time, I think was a huge, huge plus for me. Um, and I think that, you know, three hours is a healthy amount of time spent on our devices, whether you're a stay at home parent, teacher, physician, student, content creator. Um, I think three hours, at least in my perspective, felt healthy. And I think I'm going to continue to utilize those five principles 
um, to maintain control over my phone. I think I'm going to make a few minor adjustments though after experiencing what I did this week. The first is the amount of time before having my phone upon awakening. Initially, we had one hour for that. We, we, we try to push it to not have our phone for the first hour upon awakening every day this week. And that was challenging. And I think one of the things that I really personally enjoy doing is like a morning Bible study on my phone. Um, and I oftentimes was unable to do that because uh, by the time an hour passed, I needed to be at work or needed to do something else and kind of missed that Bible time, time for me. So I think I'm going to maybe reduce that to like 30 minutes or so. Um, maybe so that I'll be able to still like get up, get a nice maybe workout in, get myself prepared for the day mentally, and then still have some time just to do my own kind of Bible study. So I think that's going to be one, one minor change. I'm going to keep the hour before bedtime kind of rule for myself. But the other kind of change that I'm going to do is um, I'm going to probably alternate between grayscale mode and the normal color mode of my phone instead of just keeping it always in grayscale mode. Um, just because sometimes I would be trying to look at photos and videos and it's hard to do that if the phone is just in grayscale. Um, so I'll probably be alternating in and out of that mode, but I'm going to try my best to keep it in grayscale as much as possible because it did make the desire to be on my phone a lot less, a lot less of the dopamine burst and surge after just opening my screen. So I hope that you guys found value in this video and hopefully you can utilize these principles and customize them to fit your own life so that we can regain control of our phones and of our lives. But if you did enjoy this video, be sure to like and subscribe if you haven't already. And if you like this video, you may want to watch this video here where you'll see a little bit more of what the life looks like in the hospital if you're interested in that. But until the next one, keep evolving and I'll see you guys later.